Sir William Crookes, born in London on June 17, 1832, Crooks was one of the sixteen children of a renowned and wealthy tailor and his second wife. William also had five siblings and siblings from his father's first marriage. Although he did not enjoy primary education, his age or mind allowed him to enroll at the Royal College of Chemistry when he was only sixteen years old. Upon graduation, in 1854, Crooks became administrator of the Radcliffe Observatory, Oxford. A year later, he obtained a post at the Chester Cheshire College of Science. In 1856, at age 24, he married Ellen Humphrey. With the wealth inherited from his father, Crookes was able to set up a private lab and devote himself totally to scientific work. Apart from the remarkable experiences on solenoids, beginning in 1851, he isolated. In 1861, with the help of spectroscopy and chemical analysis, an element unknown until then, which gives him the name of thallium by correctly measuring his atomic mass, invented the radiometer in 1872 and the osteoscope a few months later. In 1863, at only 31 years he was elected a member of the Royal Society. Vice President of the Society of Chemistry in 1876, he is distinguished by numerous discoveries and inventions, inter alia, cold cathode tubes bearing his name. Finally, in 1903, in order to analyze the radiation of the radioactive bodies, he set up the sputter with a fluorescent screen of zinc sulfide. The biographical notes of today's encyclopedias pass by his parapsychological experiences or their age. In the last years of his life, he devotes himself to the occult sciences and spiritism. Which is not true because, since the seventh decade of the last century, when it is in the midst of a creative period, Crookes begins to be interested in the phenomenology of spiritism, and his most remarkable experiences in this field take place between 1871 and 1873. He is 40 years old, more than 40 years of his life, of which at least 30 intense intellectual activity, as it is clear from the article he publishes in the Quarterly Journal of Science in July 1870, he abstained, until that date to intervene in the question of whether or not physical mediums produce observable phenomena under the conditions of the experimental protocol then used in physics, and this because he was unable to give even the worst answer. In short, William Crookes maintains a strictly scientific attitude. He is so little oriented towards speculation and reverie, and he also knows that the physicist has nothing to do with the spiritualistic predictions, with the medium city itself. They do not enter his field of investigation, the scientist can admit only phenomena. He is not crushed by the number of cases, he is not intimidated by arguments of authority, and it is easier for him to address the fact that, as a scientist, he knows how to build it. He will therefore put all his science, all his methodological expertise in constructing, or instructing, with the same solidity as those he is studying in physics or chemistry. In the second supplement of the Grand Dictionnaire du Xix Cycle, La Rousse, one can read that Sir William Crookes has made a great effort to make Royal Society members admit that they must officially and seriously study the phenomena of spiritism, in connection with which he had the conviction that they were produced by a smart and immaterial force. Although he told this company the outcome of his own research, he did not find the desired understanding and then subjected the British Society for Science Development issue, but without any results. He persevered and eventually enjoyed a more favorable acceptance of spiritual physicists, such as Sir Oliver Lodge, 1851-1943, and Sir William Barrett, 1844-1925. Crookes is not scandalizing, as a school spirit does, but helps to gain a scientific gain. He knows that what seems an exception or aberrant phenomenon often proves to be a happy indication for new ways of research. How did it all start? In 1867 he lost his younger brother, Philip Cromwell Valley, a close friend and physicist practicing spiritism, convinced Crookes to attend a session and try to communicate with the deceased spirit. Whatever messages they received the it seems that they were convincing enough for crooks. Since then he has begun to seriously study these phenomena. Some parapsychologists have considered the experiments conducted by crooks with the famous Daniel Douglas home medium, 1833-1886, to 
the first strict scientific tests to test medium-term skills. Referring to one of these, Crookes said that Holm went to the fireplace and, after scouring the hot coal with bare hands, took one of the size of an orange, and putting it in the hilt of the right palm completely covered it with the left and began to blow into it like a furnace until the coal had reached incandescentness. Then he drew Crookes's attention to the flame that flicked on the surface of his bat and caressed his fingers. A number of witnesses to the event were able to keep the incandescent hand in the hand without burning, after home transferred their power. Those who handled the coal without the energy transfer from home suffered terrible burns. Crookes has undoubtedly stirred up among his most skeptical colleagues when he told them he had spoken with a phantom and had photographed it in over 40 photos. Photographs. And when she began to describe the spirit as a perfect beauty, a glittering purity, of a complexity that photography was not able to surprise, rumors began to appear that the scholar had completely lost his sense of objectivity. Sir William Crook's photography with Sir William Crook's and Katie King's spirit. Florence Cook, the medium through which the spirit called Katie King materialized first met this spirit when he was only 15 years old. Katie has promised to be Florence's spiritual guide for three years and will help in producing remarkable phenomena. Katie King would have been an Egyptian princess 5,000 years ago initiated from the pharaoh's court at that time. In April 1872, Katie appeared only as a mortal mask between the veil draperies of the seance office, but as his medium grew more and more, the spirit could come out of the office showing himself as a complete body, to the participants in meetings organized by crooks. Katie King managed to temporarily materialize in a body with the carnal look, by borrowing from the invisible bodies, but also from the body of the medium, but in an unknowing and small proportion and from the persons who attended these meetings. To achieve these materializations, the young Florence was hypnotized, and it was hard to recover from Katie's dematerialization and disappearance. During such demonstrations, Crooks made 44 photos, some outperforming, others worse because photographic techniques were not very advanced at the time. It was said that Katie King's spirit had become almost a permanent tenant of Cook's house. When the young woman got married, her husband complained that he felt like he was married to two women. Katie began to materialize in the most unexpected moments, and in some nights she even sneaked in bed along with her medium and her husband. Many people have been convinced of the authenticity of these appearances due to Crook's testimony. Others have been scandalous about the many hours the physicist spent in the company of Florence Cook, but Crooks remained firmly in position, reaching the end of the investigations, concluding that it is unimaginable to suggest that a 15-year-old innocent school teacher would be able to stage such a gigantic imposture for three years. Crooks has shown to his critics that during all these years his face has undergone any test he has imposed on him, he has accepted to be investigated before and after the spiritism sessions, and has visited his laboratory with the exact purpose of doing more stringent scientific tests, which demonstrated its honesty. The parapsychology experiments of William Crookes did not affect the reception of the Royal Medal from the Royal Society in 1875 or the Sir Noble Investiture in 1897. Crookes had strong allies in the scientific world, which meant a quasi-legitimate legitimacy, designed to support the scholar in his certainty. In addition, politicians or scientists with a skeptical attitude or rejection of spiritism and its phenomenology did not cease to pay homage and honor. They recognized in him one of the greatest minds of the age. He supported the Parapsychic Research Society SPR, since its inception in 1882, and has even been its president since 1886. But after 1875 he did not perform tests on media or other paranormal phenomena. As a sum of his views on the subject, Crooks once said, The phenomena for which they are ready to testify are extraordinary and so categorically opposed to scientific beliefs among other things, regarding the ubiquity and the invariable action of gravitational force, that right now, when I remember in detail the scenes I have witnessed, between the reason that says these things are scientifically impossible, and the conviction of my senses, why I touched and I saw, it is absolutely true that between this world and the other, connections were created. William Crookes gave impetus to scientific parapsychology, 
his interpretations and observations being different from those of spiritual spirits. Here is what he declared in the researches on the phenomena of spiritualism, 1874. Since then, I have been given a number of opportunities to continue my investigations, I have gladly taken advantage of serious scientific tests to apply these phenomena, thus obtaining precise results which, in my opinion, must be published. It seems to me that these experiences conclusively establish the existence of a new, connected force, in an unknown way, with the organization of the human body, which, for more convenience, we will call it psychic force. After Mrs. Crooks died in 1916, Sir William immediately tried to communicate with her. According to sources, she received messages from the woman's spirit, which she considered evidence of contact with the other world. Others say an alleged photo of Mrs. Crooks's spirit would have been altered in the development process. 